We are joined by someone who is now emerging in the discussions we've had over the last couple of hours uh, as a person who could benefit uh, from what has happened politically in the last 24 hours or, or a party that could do well out of this. That is New Zealand First. Um, so what does this mean for New Zealand First? And I've also had text saying that our next guest is called uh, for an early election. His name is Winston Peters, the leaders of, leader of New Zealand First, and he joins us now. From, from where, Winston? You're at home? It's a good set. looks lovely there and sunny. <laughs> I'm in Northern for another day. All right, very good. And boy, we've solved our technical issues. You're coming through beautifully. I hope you can hear me. Well, first, I can. first up, um, were you surprised at the events that unfolded yesterday in Napier? No, personally, I was not. And people around me know that what I've said about this being... Uh, going uh, likely to happen, and um, though I do understand why the public would be seriously surprised by it, yeah, but I wasn't I'm yeah. not being wise after the event. Okay, we had Chris Trotter and, and Bomber Bradbury on this morning, and I think Trotter was saying he believed that a large part there, there are always a lot of factors in, in political decisions was that the Maori caucus, uh, the Labour Maori caucus, was refusing to take a cuppa and a break on co-governance and three waters. And that part of Jacinda Ardern's uh, thinking was, if you guys aren't prepared to compromise on that, you give me a no-win situation uh, come, the, come the next election. Um, if you're going to stick to your guns, I, I, I'm out of here. Do you think those issues, which are fundamentally, let's, let's not beat around the bush, issues of race, co-governance and treaty issues, do you think they were part or they are part of an ongoing problem inside the Labour caucus that was part of Jacinda Ardern's uh, decision to quit? Well, there's no doubt about that, but the decision to quit is simply based on the reality of facing post-2020 a declining support for the Labour Party and uh, the abandonment of the what I might call the core worker issues of New Zealand for a whole lot of woke issues and a whole lot of preferential issues of the Māori wing of the party, uh, of which she was happy to go along with, but now realises the political price of that. And this is an analytical barometer decision made on the basis of what is the likelihood of winning, and the answer is very, very remote now. All right. Uh, Winston... I have to ask you, does the departure of Jacinda Ardern, and you have made, uh, for you, pretty unambiguous comments about the chances of doing a deal w with Labor, were you to, to return to Parliament, or was New Zealand First to return after the next election? Does the departure of Jacinda Ardern make the Labor Party any more trustworthy, any more appealing as a party that New Zealand First might support post-election if it's in? Look, first of all, I knew you'd ask that question. <laughs> it's your hardly annual or your hardly weekly or your hardly monthly question. I used the word they when I said it in an interview with Audrey Young and the New Zealand Herald, and I've not changed my mind at all. Those on the inside and who knew the, about the secret commissioning of Hey Pur Pur, the Three Waters and all that did not tell me or my colleagues. And uh, for that, that is not... Uh, in any way, a forgivable offence. You cannot go into coalition and breach trust like that. So the answer is the same. All right, we the departure of Jacinda doesn't change your position on that. Thank you for answering the question so clearly and unambiguously. The next question I have for you, if we look at what has happened, not just in the last 24 hours, but literally since the 2020 election, I think it can rightly be argued that the contract that Labor made with this country in 2020 has been broken. The Prime Minister has walked away. She's walked away from her electorate. It would seem to me whatever plan or direction this Labor administration has, it has no mandate. Is it time for us to go to the polls now, bugger waiting, and I cannot figure out why the Prime Minister thought she could announce a, an election date, then resign. That should be the next Prime Minister's prerogative. Do you think we need an, an early election? Well, first of all, on the question as to who should have made that announcement, surely the next leader, if that person was going to have 
the scintilla of respectability had to make that announcement, not to Senator Ardern. I was actually quite shocked by that and that the fact that the media never picked that up. Uh, the second thing is, uh, when you say, should there be a new election? Well, you know, they say Turkeys don't vote for an early Christmas, so to speak. Uh, and the third thing, though, is this. There are developing circumstances which will quite possibly mean that there will be a much earlier election than the 14th of October this year. What are those developing circumstances? You'll have to wait and see them unfold. But there is enough going wrong with the Labour Party. There's enough that's been seriously kept away from the public scrutiny and the lack of questions from the mainstream media. But when those things emerge, and you'll see them march onwards, it'll become very, very clear to a whole lot of people in the Labour Party caucus that they too themselves have been misled. You're teasing now, be... You're teasing now, Winston. Is there something specific you can put, point to? Yes, I can, but I'm not doing it now. Why not? I want you to be because, open and transparent with us. Well, I, well, open and transparent is when you open your mouth, <laughs> right? And I haven't opened my mouth in that matter. Well, than you just you. have. You've just told us there's a big secret you're not telling us that will well, affect... Are you recording for a snap election now? The chance of that is zero. I'm saying to you, though, there are developing circumstances where that may well happen. Yeah, and, and I guess what happens here, no matter how big their caucuses, a whole lot of MPs are sitting there thinking, I am gone, Burger, if we don't do something. And it also looks, Winston, doesn't it, like the tide hasn't stopped going out. This isn't going to stem the bleeding for Labour, is it? In fact, I would say it's going to make it worse, the departure of, of Jacinda Ardern. I still can't think of anyone as a, a leader or leadership team that would have done any better than her under the current circumstances. So in some ways it was quite a churlish move of hers. She's really abandoned her political home. Well, I don't want this to be a criticism of the prior stepping down a day after that, other than to say, contrast this with the, the same statement made by John Key prior to the 2017 election where he said, no more fuel in the tank, so to speak. Uh, but he gave the job over to, um, Bill, um, to Bill English and Bill have, had a better prospect in 2017 than John Key had. After the flag disaster and the Northern referee, uh, the by-election where John Key lost both of those badly, I think he knew the game was up and so does Jacinda, but she's not left herself with a sub surviving potential leader who can hold the uh, stage, so to speak, uh, coming up to 2023. I got it, but I chuckled thinking of you last night. Um, everyone says, oh, Winston's passed and he's gone. He's yesterday's man. And you have watched generations of politicians younger than you come and cycle through from backbencher to prime minister and then they're gone. And Jacinda Ardern is just another one. And here you are. You are still in the game. You're still a an active politician. I think that gives you, amongst a few others, we had Richard Preble on this morning, some really interesting perspective on this. And I know that history well, takes a long time to settle. What do you think history will make of the prime ministership of Jacinda Ardern, which you had a large part in creating. Well, it would be a very mixed legacy. That's the fact. Between 2017 and 2020, there were three crises. There was the Christchurch massacre, there was the uh, uh, Fakari Island, White Island disaster, and then, of course, COVID as well. Uh, and when we got the COVID arrival in New Zealand, no one knew what they were dealing with. They were looking, we thought, at the Spanish flu of 100 years before that and all the same consequences. And that was one performance. But Labour, as you know, took all the credit in 2020, took all the plaudits from main, uh, mainly subservient mainstream media, just cheered it on without looking at the substance. Post-2020, the wheels have come off. So it's a mixed legacy, seriously, when people look at it dispassionately in time. Yeah. How did you find the Prime Minister as a person in a political sense? I mean, you've already called her a liar, said she misled you on Māori issues. No, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't call her a liar. I said she simply did not tell me what was going on in a critical part of a coalition arrangement where we had to know because taxpayers' money was being expended, expended doing it. It's that simple. Mm. But I did not call her a liar. Mm. Why did you think of her as a person in politics? Oh, look, when you go into coalitions, you I've dealt with 
a whole lot of people over the years. Jim Bolger was one who had sacked me three times. I had to put that aside. I dealt with Helen Clark. I shook her hand and kept our word, and I can't, have got no complaint about that in any respect at all. But Labor circa 2017 was a different, a different kettle of fish. They were not like the Labor Party that I had dealt with when Helen Clark and uh, Michael Cullen. They were very much different from that, and they still are. And that's going to be the reason for their demise. Mm. Do you say any, see any way, anything they could do uh, before the next election, whenever that might be, uh, that will improve their chances? Or are we dealing essentially with a gone burger, lame, lame duck government? Well, you, you never know what might emerge in the circumstances because Labor is facing some serious inexperience from the other side, and which was Labor's problem in 2007. You don't realise how difficult it is to govern with people who have never been there before. But I think, you know, it's like MPs, they get the job as an MP and think they're God. And you've got people getting into cabinet and think they've made it. And the answer is no, you haven't. You'll make it when you show that you can deliver. And that was the delivery side in which the promises were one thing, the performance was something else. So you can never say never because you never know what the other side uh, or other political parties might do by way of mistakes. But at this point in time, all the omens, all the warnings, all the signs are very bad for Labour. They are indeed. Winston, uh, so glad we got our technical problem sorted. That's the best technical cross we've done. The content wasn't <laughs> bad either, mate. I thank you very much indeed for your time. We will talk again uh, soon. That is the leader of New Zealand First, Winston Peters. Doesn't change. Big takeout from that. Doesn't change. Jacinda leaving doesn't change the fact that he's essentially ruled Labour out. But he says, oh, National, they need to be kept honest. You vote for me, Winston Peters. I think he's and, he's, and he's hinting, and I know what the hint is, what everyone, what idiots on Twitter are saying about certain legal stuff in March. I have seen absolutely zero zilch evidence that journalistically I would say is evidence or I could base a story on about that rumour. I think you're all disappearing up each other's bottoms. And that's why I pushed Winston to say what that was, and he wouldn't, because he knows that he doesn't have any... Um, uh, he, any real evidence regarding that either. I, I want to come back before I take your calls and please ring in. I know some of you will be at work. Tell the boss to get stuffed. You can text me. You're sitting at home. I think we've had a remarkable 24 hours in politics in New Zealand. Um, and I think this changes. Anything now is possible this year. Do not think that we are just sleepwalking to a, a normal election campaign on October the 14th. It is now clear from what we've learnt this morning, the Prime Minister only announced that date to assuage her guilt about cutting and running from Epsom and to avoid a by-election there. Nothing about this is normal. Nothing about this is truly planned by the Labor Party. There is no cunning strategy here. We have a government in free fall. And the leader of a majority under MMP government has walked has thrown in the towel. The leader of the team of five million has thrown a half, clutched her ankle and been stretched off the field. So we are in most unusual times. And of course it is interesting, I think it's exciting. Oh, really funny too, how, how vicious, venal and bitter people can be. I'm getting texts from people saying, I really wanted to see her lose. I feel greatly disappointed that I couldn't put the boot in on election night. Uh, we got to get above that. And I think there is some, I think all the stuff you've heard about why this happened, I think it all feeds into the decision that was made. But I get the feeling that at the end of the day, there was some sort of conflict. And Jacinda Ardern says the personal, uh, and let me try and, and, and sum this up. Jacinda Ardern has never been a robust person. She is not a fighter, she's a lover. And that's fine as long as you're being loved back. So Jacinda Ardern, and I know they wrap people around here to keep her emotionally safe. She's got imposter syndrome, she's admitted to that. She is a vulnerable person person, and I was going to say woman, but then I'd get accused of misogyny. I think the cost of, of, of the reality of social media and being a politician and being controversial is very high for anyone. 
And if you're an emotionally vulnerable person like the Prime Minister, slightly more high. I also think there was a power struggle going on within the Labour caucus over issues of co-governance and three waters.